there comes a time where you got to stop and sit back and just look at all the nonsense that's going around. And it makes you think and wonder and ponder. So here's a proposal. I'm starting to think that art, or at least our current definition of the term, is coming to an end. And this rant has two parts to it. One is social justice warrior bashing, and the other is game publisher bashing. We'll start with the SJW part. We seem to have entered this new dark age of people trying to suppress expression. I'm going to take an excerpt from the late Richard Jenny, where he takes a jab at people on the extreme left, and I quote, These are the sensitive liberal people who are always yelling about people's freedom of speech and expression, unless you happen to say something that pisses them off. Then they can't wait to tie your ass to the back bumper of a Toyota hybrid and drag it to the Berkeley campus and drop your carcass in front of the Fidel Castro building for the continuing study of why America sucks. When you start dictating to an artist what is and isn't acceptable, or you want them to specifically cater to your needs, you completely undermine the entire creative process. You are destroying an artist's creative vision. In fact, the people who complain about how much they care about freedom of expression and free speech have turned into hypocrites as they only want to be in their echo chamber and not deal with the reality of how the world is. What really inspired this rant was, of course, Polygon. They were complaining about the Han Solo movie in an article where they railed against a photo of the cast being mostly white with one black guy, the person playing the young Lando Calrissian, complaining about how they should have waited until the casting was finished. But is it really that necessary to push that rhetoric? They did it with The Force Awakens with the character Rey, who was very much a Mary Sue type of character which felt pandering. It was still a really good movie, but my issue with Rey is that she was too powerful and badass for her first appearance. Think about it. Rey was awesome with her staff. She figured out that she could use the Force pretty well and wield a lightsaber with absolutely no training and go toe-to-toe with Kylo Ren, who has a ton of training in the ways of the Force. It took three movies for Anakin and Luke Skywalker to turn into badass Jedi warriors. Rey, on the other hand, because she's too much of a badass, she has nowhere to go when it comes to learning the ways of the Force. They'll have to bring her down to a more novice level in a way for Episode 8 that will make her a badass again in Episode 9. But I really did enjoy the movie despite that being my only complaint. I find it funny that The Simpsons predicted this hypocrisy. When Marge hated Itchy and Scratchy and campaigned to have the series changed after Maggie repeated a stunt she saw on the show. The show was changed to fit her ideals, which caused it to tank. But then Michelangelo's David came to the Springfield Museum, her followers started protesting it, and wanted her to lead the cause. But she declined and thought it was art. Then it was thrown back in her face that it's not right to pick and choose what's acceptable and what isn't. But she still tried to say that not all forms of free speech are fine and some should be rejected as trash, still trying to stick to her guns. In that very episode, Episode, Marge has a sign that says, I'm protesting because Itchy and Scratchy are indirectly responsible for my husband being hit on the head with a mallet. This here is the perfect example of all SJW rhetoric. It shows a complete and utter lack of responsibility on their own part and would rather blame an outside source. Instead of teaching that the behavior is unacceptable, they're telling that the source of the behavior should be responsible. Because why be a good parent if you could have other people do it for you? Marvel Games' Bill Roseman says that games need to be more diverse. I was going to say that Marvel Comics doing things like pandering to SJWs was hurting them, but the article that that came from was on Breitbart, a source of which I wouldn't fuck with a 10-foot dick that was someone else's, because I don't find it very trustworthy. But games are already as diverse as movies and comics. These people that keep crying about games need to be more diverse need to stop looking at really old games or the games that sell gangbusters like Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty. Like when Ashley Judd said that the video game industry needs to stop beating the shit out of women for profit and making billions of dollars on it. However, she had absolutely no examples of games where you are a male protagonist going around beating the crap out of women just for the sake of it or for it even being its actual premise. Because to my knowledge, no such game exists. But they don't look at that. They don't look at games like Fallout where you can make your own character. Or games like Overwatch where there's a large diverse cast of characters. I just bought Horizon Zero Dawn and the main character is a woman. Where's the SJW singing praises for that game? You want to know what's going to happen? The SJWs will be quiet for a bit, only to wait for the next game oozing with testosterone to be released. So they can continue complaining and ignoring things like Horizon Zero Dawn or even Tomb Raider 
when it's brought up. But like I said in my sexism and games videos, it's all just a fad as you can see the signs that it's going away as more and more people get sick and tired of pandering to SJWs and safe space logic. Even recently, it was announced by Blizzard that Symmetra is autistic. Polygon reported on it, because of course. And someone in the comments who is an autistic female said that it wasn't needed, and that all it does is stroke the creator's ego and how accepting they are. That this kind of virtue signaling is more harmful than good, as all it really does is make people feel good about themselves for throwing in token inclusion. And that she doesn't need or want representation like that because it's an empty gesture, and she even acknowledged that she wasn't speaking for all autistic women. And of course, all the neurotypical people got on her case about it, saying that she didn't speak for all autistic women and shit like that, which was said that the girl already stated. And of course, it's hypocritical that these are the type of people who love to lick Anita Sarkeesian's butthole, who is a woman that thinks she speaks for all women, despite the fact that many women have said that she doesn't speak for them. But that's how these people work. They want that echo chamber that tells them that they're doing good so they feel good, and anything that can pop that very thin bubble is a threat to their own delusions. But now let's look at publisher interference, which is probably the worst thing that happens. If you looked at early footage for Fuse, which was made by Insomniac Games, it looked very different. It had a more cartoony look and then the publisher EA forced them to change it into a generic looking shooter. EA did the same thing with Dead Space 3, where they forced that microtransaction crap into the game. Even movies aren't safe with Spider-Man 3. Sony Pictures demanded Sam Raimi to include Venom in the final battle because fans would want it instead of setting up Venom for the fourth movie, like Raimi had planned. Then Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire, and Kirsten Dunst all quit, leading Sony to reboot the series into The Amazing Spider-Man. And then they screwed that sequel up too, leading to another reboot, this time being done by Marvel Studios so they could bring Spider-Man into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I get why publishers want to do and mess with the creative vision of people trying to make the game. They have their market researchers watching what's popular so they can get the highest possible return. However, messing with that creative process can hurt the game in the end. Fuse didn't do all that well, and Dead Space 3 was heavily criticized for the use of microtransactions. The issue is that a lot of these people that interfere with the process of making games aren't from the game industry at all. They come from other fields. And that's where it gets hard to defend games as art, because a fine line is being walked. If a publisher is funding a game, then it's more like a person commissioning a piece of work and therefore they have the final say in how they want it to look. But if the developer is paying for it, and then a publisher should have absolutely no say in the final product of the game. Like how EA tried to dictate on how Outworld Inhabitants should have a Made Stranger's Wrath, and even trying to make it the property of themselves. When Lorne Lanning fought back against EA, EA decided to hardly do any marketing for the game in retaliation. Konami seems to have this mindset that anyone can make a game and that it doesn't matter who the creative lead is in charge. Which is why they treated Kojima in the way that they did when it came to Metal Gear Solid 5, essentially cutting him out from the game the best they could and using the legal system to try and keep him from going to a Game Awards event. And now he's gone and what has Konami been doing with a Metal Gear property? They made a pachinko machine and are making Metal Gear survive, a four player co-op zombie survival game. The most generic thing that's out there, so why bother at that point? Why do you think that we have all these game developers leaving and forming their own companies? They're tired of all the interference from the publishers and investors and want to make games that they want to make. So since there's SJWs trying to dictate what content is appropriate for games based on whatever their standards are, and even though they'll never play the games, and publishers trying to dictate what should be in a game due to focus testing and what yields the most profit and consequences be damned if the players hate it, doesn't that cripple the creative process and destroy the original vision the people making the game had? It's like when that elderly woman took it upon herself and tried to restore a painting of Jesus and totally botched it. I really don't know what to say. I want to say that art is dying with all the people trying to interfere with artists' creative vision for whatever reason they have. But there's people who will say that it is art but it's just bad art. But my rebuttal to that is that it's akin to book burning. And it is modern day book burning. SJWs using shame, which is the new fire, to get developers to change the game that they don't like to fit their standards into something that they won't even play anyways is still a form of censorship. And I've said in the past that these SJWs have hurt their own causes more so than they've helped. Crying about sexism in games and how games don't appeal to women or how they're misogynistic, transphobic, or whatever, and even labeling gamers the same way. 
it creates opposition. Not to changing games, but from a gamer's perspective, they're being attacked again like when older generations blame mass shootings on violent games despite mountains of evidence to the contrary. Which causes more backlash for when a game like Virginia comes out. Some people are calling it Tumblr the video game, or an SJW game, or whatever derogatory name you can think of. All because it starred a black woman as the main character. If there weren't SJWs complaining all the time and pointing out stuff for being racist, sexist, Texas, homo and transphobic when it's clearly not, people wouldn't get tired of their bitching and wouldn't be opposed to a game just because of its premise, or has the things that SJWs complain about not being there. You cannot change unconscious bias by announcing your plan to the world. You just go and do it so people will see it and go, oh, that's a thing, and then they'll move about their day. Publishers, on the other hand, are just ignorant of what it is that people want dictating to the consumer base that what they want is what the customers want, which is probably for the best in certain cases. As Sonic games can prove, no one knows what they want. One group says they want A, while another says they want B, another says C, and those who wanted A and B hate C, and just for good measure, they hate D as well. But that's just my thoughts. What are yours? Is art dying due to SJW whining and publishers bastardizing the original vision? Or will the creative process prevail against it eventually?